Hello, I'm Rebecca Stone, the Division Chief of G1 Oncology at Johns Hopkins. At the system level, I serve as the Director of Surgical Pathways within the Armstrong Institute of Quality and Safety and is the Surgeon Lead for Care Transformation. The mission of the Surgical Pathways Program at Johns Hopkins is to develop and to put into action multidisciplinary care plans that translate the latest, best evidence into high-value perioperative care and enhance recovery after surgery, or ERAS pathways have really become the shining stars of much of this work over the past decade. We have come to value standardization of perioperative care through ERAS because it offers a pragmatic, patient-centered way for us to eliminate disparities and to achieve equitable surgical care. Every enhanced recovery pathway, whether it is intended for patients recovering from a Whipple or from a C-section, has five key components, patient education and optimization, multimodal opioid sparing analgesia, nausea infection and clot prevention, maintenance of euvolemia, and early nutrition and activity. The many interventions that bring each of these five key components to life are aimed at minimizing surgical stress. Every intervention targets factors that delay recovery, such as slow return of bowel function, immobility, and pain. And we have a lot of data that it really works. Simple interventions like encouraging patients to drink clear liquids until two to four hours before surgery, as opposed to keeping them NPO after midnight, are really impactful. Oral hydration until a few hours before surgery can significantly decrease the need for IV fluids in the OR. And this is really important because too much IV fluids compromises healing. Did you know that it's estimated that a one liter bag of normal saline has as much salt as three party-sized bags of Lay's potato chips. Preventing as opposed to reacting to pain is another theme that runs through every ERAS pathway. And the ultimate goal here is to minimize the prescribing of narcotics. Opioids have a number of adverse effects that compromise surgical recovery, including postoperative nausea and vomiting, respiratory depression, delirium, bowel dysfunction, urinary retention, immunocompromise, and addiction even after short-term opioid use. Worse, dependency on inpatient narcotics directly translates into post-discharge use. We now know that upwards of 8% of opioid-naive patients undergoing non-cancer procedures develop new persistent opioid use, and that risk is even higher after curative intent surgery. This vastly surpasses the 0.4% rate of new persistent opioid use in non-surgical populations. Thus, we are absolutely committed to using interventions across the perioperative continuum to decrease opioid dependency in our patients. On ERAS, we prescribe preventative non-opioid medications in the hour leading up to surgery. We work with anesthesia to provide patients with local and regional nerve blocks tailored to their procedures and continue non-opioid medications on a scheduled basis postoperatively to avoid pain. The prevention of surgical site infection is equally important to the high quality and safety of care we aim for with ERAS. Our surgical site infection prevention bundle is an ERAS crown jewel, and we are constantly working to make it better and better. For example, we most recently partnered with the Allergy Center at Bayview to add a workflow to our ERAS pathways that facilitates preoperative penicillin allergy verification for patients who are labeled penicillin allergic. Why is this so important? Penicillin allergic patients are typically prescribed an alternative to penicillins for infection prophylaxis in the OR. And this practice is associated with a 50% increased risk of surgical site infection because these alternative antibiotics just don't work as well. While 10% of patients are labeled penicillin allergic, nine out of 10 of them are not truly allergic. So we can clear the vast majority of patients erroneously labeled as penicillin allergic before surgery so that they can receive the most effective antibiotic prophylaxis against surgical site infection. Does all of this work? Loads of data that it does. For our gynoc patients undergoing large open abdominal surgeries, ERAS decreases narcotic consumption and need for PCA narcotic pumps by 45% while maintaining good pain control. If anything, our patients score less pain on postoperative days two to three than before. Further, data show that a third of patients do not need any opioid pain medication 
at home after hospital discharge. ERAS also decreases major complications like surgical site infection by 30% and decreases length of inpatient stay after surgery by at least a day. For us, ERAS decreases total cost of care by 15%, so it really is a win all around. Last, a word about patient education. We know this is absolutely critical to success. We all agree that this ERAS component deserves as much attention as any other, but it is probably the one in need of a sprucing up the most, so to speak. So over the past year, our surgical teams and the Office of Patient and Family Education under the direction of Tom Bauer partnered with Walters Kluwer to innovate ERAS patient education. We are working to engineer a way to use mainstream smart devices as a media for patient coaching, education, and reporting. The idea here is that our patients can report out their knowledge about and participation in ERAS, as well as their achievement of recovery milestones, like mobility and others, using their mainstream smart devices. Thus, we have a way to engage and interact with patients preparing for and recovering from surgery in ways we never dreamed possible. And this really is living proof that the more we dream, the more we can achieve. Thank you.